It is currently uh, 2 a.m., but I can't sleep, so I've got five packages. Might as well film a mailbag. Let's get started. Let's start um, with an easy one. Uh, this one is $17.02, but it is from Amazon. January 10th, January 25th. Not a prime item, but the cheapest one I could find. And this is thanks to uh, affiliate money. So I don't think it covered the whole thing, but it definitely took a big chunk out of it. So thank you for using my links in the descriptions of my videos. This here is a box of wire. Do not accept if seal is broken. Uh, really? Who would care about tampered to wire? Strange. So in here, we've got some hookup wire, some accessories too. So they've got like this, um, this wire stripper, which is just basically a razor blade. You put the wire in and you twist it around. There's a punch down tool here. I'm not sure what this part is for. Yeah, nothing too special. Some uh, zip ties, some heat shrink, some more zip ties, and here's the wire. Now I'm trying to remember how long each length of uh, wire was, but this was the um, the best deal for uh, length to um, diameter. I also wanted something. Oh, is this solid? Hmm, hang on a sec, gotta strip a little bit of this. Um, this is supposed to be stranded wire, but it feels like solid wire. Let me see here. Try out the stripper at the same time. No, that wasn't great. Let me strip some of this and I'll bring you back zoomed in. Instead of zooming you in, I figure I, I'll just use this uh, microscope here. Um, gonna have to learn how to use it anyways or how I can integrate it in my system anyways so yeah um, so I did go to check and it is indeed a solid core on the listing and yeah for sure uh, how do you record on this there we go and uh, yeah for sure it definitely is solid core so that sucks I ordered the wrong thing and that means that at some point I'm gonna have to order some more, but it, it won't be for a little while. Uh, so, and this is a 22 gauge wire, and I wanted this stuff so I can build extensions. Uh, some of you have seen that I have some uh, new uh, crimp connectors, the JSTs. Um, I actually have some more crimp connectors coming in this episode, and I just need thin wire. This is, you know, 22 gauge, pretty thin, in order to make those uh, extension things. So um, yeah, I'll just put them on my, put this wire on my wish list, the, the proper ones this time. And um, you know, when I get some more affiliate funds, uh, hopefully in a month or two, then I'll just order them. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, this wire is useful. So it's not going to go to waste. Um, it's very nice to make uh, breadboard jumpers with um, because you can cut them to, to length. I've had some, I have some wire that I can do that with already. Uh, but it's a little hard to strip. This stuff is way better for that, like as you just saw with these um, strippers that another maker sent, which now his mark is rubbed off. So yeah, slightly disappointed in this, uh, and disappointed in myself because I picked the wrong ones, but that's fine. Let's move on to the next one. Next one up is this one here. Uh, the text on this says viewing card, and indeed that's what it should be. Uh, November 27th ordered, January 19th arrived. So, you know, two months on this one. $5.92. These things are expensive, um, but I think as part of some beginner series that I am uh, conceptualizing at the moment, it's going to be very useful. So, yeah, there, there it is. This is magnetic viewing film. And I think in order for you to get a really good idea of what this does, I have to zoom you in. I hope that doesn't mean it's defective, the fact that it's like weird there. Let me zoom you in. So as far as I understand it, this is basically, well, it's magnetic viewing film. It's basically um, iron filings in a sort of uh, oily matrix, but it's like it's super thin. It's not like uh, something on the macro scale. It's really on the micro scale. And uh, I guess it's in this plastic here in order to keep it in shape. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but basically, if you have a magnet, 
and you put this on, uh, what happens is the poles of that magnet, so, you know, north, north and south, they align the uh, iron filings on the inside here, which then blocks the light and gives you an idea of where the poles are. So if you see this uh, horseshoe magnet, maybe if I hold it up like this, you'll see the two poles, see on the two ends, but you can see it on the side too, because you know where there's north there needs to be a south, and you see that there's a north-south on both sides. It's like two, there's like four magnet poles, so two, two magnets stuck together. So it's useful in uh, looking at the magnetic field on, let's say, uh, inductors and stuff like that in real time, or magnets, you know, like this. These are neodymium magnets, and you can just stick them side by side there. And there we go. You can see the two, the two poles there. So you see the magnetic flux will be coming coming from one pole to the other like this. And if we stand them up sideways, we might be able to see a different image. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So the magnetic poles going like this and like this to hold them together. So. Yeah, really neat to be able to see the magnetic fields where they exist. There are a few like basic videos that I want to do that will require this um, or make it a lot better. And a lot of the automotive stuff I'm dreaming up of too for the uh, second channel, uh, that will be useful for that too. Here, there we go. I can see a whole bunch of the, the poles there. Really neat. I've been wanting to get myself some of this stuff and... Uh, yeah, there we go. It was a little bit expensive, but hopefully I can get more than $6 worth of videos out of it. Maybe if I can educate some of you and educate myself, it'll be worth it. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here, which says sensors, and I believe this is part of a blitz of uh, temperature and humidity sensors I've been picking up. So November 16th to January 21st, $10.15. Uh, I think that's what it is. I'm pretty sure they're the DHT-22s. Let's see if that's true. Oh, they are not. Where are my DHT-22s? Or did I get DHT-22s already? I don't remember. Um, yeah, I need to zoom you in for these because they are tiny. And so these absolutely tiny things are BME-280s or BMP-280s, but they're on this kind of GY... Um, backing thing um, I find like these purple modules are always like GY something I don't know if it's a, a company that made a whole bunch in their style um, but yeah the INA 219 for example is available on a purple substrate like this and it's the GY 219 I don't know what it is but anyways this is a um, apparently relatively accurate uh, temperature and uh, barometric sensor so it has uh, atmospheric pressure and temperature and it's these kinds of sensors that are used on drones and stuff to do altitude hold which is uh, pretty interesting in fact that you're able to get so much done and this chip is absolutely tiny like really small like the board is kind of big because there's a few like support pieces but the chip is absolutely tiny it must be about 0805 size it's very small so yeah I've got 10 of these for whatever reason and it cost me you know 10 bucks they were about a dollar a piece so this could be a possibility for um, a weather station I don't know I'll have to round up all the temperature sensors and make one massive video about temperature sensing and yeah it is late don't forget it's almost 3 a.m. at this point and uh, so I did actually have the um, the, the the DHT 22 sensors already so I do have them in hand so yeah these were never going to be DHT 22 so there we go 10 of these and uh, at some point I'm gonna have to put them all together and uh, run some software on to the next one next one up is this one here um, this one came from eBay and it cost me an arm and a leg and I'll explain why in a moment but yeah 3869 January 1st to January 15th um, the reason this costs a lot is because I bought it from a Canadian seller and I bought this when uh, it was before I knew I had the human malware. I bought this when um, I thought there was some air quality issues in my in my workshop here 
And so I got a air quality detector. Um, this reads a CO, CO2, uh, HCHO. I believe that is uh, formaldehyde. For some reason, it's common for these detectors to have it. Um, air quality index and uh, total VOCs, that's volatile organic compounds, uh, stuff like, I don't know, I guess like a, a, a VOC would be like gasoline fumes or something like that. I don't know the actual definition, and it's 3 a.m., so give me a break. Um, instructions, USB cable, and the device itself. Is there plastic on this? Hard to say. Yeah, there's plastic. Not a very easy peel. There we go. All right. Reset on off. There we go. Oh, it's on. Let me just uh, make sure it doesn't reflect my face. Oh, you can't see that anyways. Wow, this is really dim to me. I can just imagine for you folks. Okay, well, let me dim the lights then. All right, first thing I'll say is uh, don't be alarmed at the CO levels here. Uh, 9 ppm is the quote-unquote safe levels. Um, but the instructions actually say you can't take the reading uh, from the, the, the regular things. They said just take the average after about 30 minutes. So I don't know if this is accurate right now. I also don't know if, you know, the bags and stuff it was stuffed in uh, had a whole bunch. Oh, see, you do a little bit of ventilation and it changes the, the values big time. Um, so CO2 is at um, 530 ppm. That's supposed to be 5,000 ppm is the max. So CO2, not very high. HCHO seems to be 0.021 or so. Uh, don't Not sure what that means. AQI 0.2, not sure what that means either. Is there actually... The instructions are very sparse. Uh... No, <laughs> doesn't say anything. No. Oh, um, here we go. So over here it says CO zero to fifty is excellent. Mm-hmm. I have seen uh, you know eighteen on certain websites. Um, AQI zero one is good. Zero two is. I mean, zero one is excellent. Zero two is good. Okay, that's what it is. Um, CO two zero to four fifty is excellent, and we're in the good range here. Okay. Uh, TVOC that would be this one here. We're at zero point two. That means we're excellent. Uh, and HCHO we are also excellent up to point oh eight. So again, these readings mean nothing at the moment because it has to be, uh, you know, on for a half hour or so. And I'm not even sure what these buttons do. I don't know. But just like just handling this and the, the readings spike, not too sure why, um, but it is what it is. So basically, I'm going to leave this thing running for quite a while, and then you know, I'm going to take averages from that. It's just to give me an idea. We have uh, CO detectors around the house, um, one in the basement as well, but I have nothing that, to test that against. So that's why I wanted another point of data, just to give me an idea, and then, yeah, I can stop worrying. Another cool thing is it has a lithium-ion battery on the inside either lithium ion or lithium polymer and it is rechargeable with and this is a big deal in today's market USB type C so type C is very much appreciated in today's market and it's like pretty long it's probably a three foot cable so it's a little bit more expensive than what I usually buy but I was worried that my workshop here was you know, really bad to be in, and this is the place where I spend most of my time. Um, so, 
this is why I got this, but I mean, it seems okay for now. We'll have to keep monitoring it though. On to the next one. And the very last package today is this one here. It's a wire pin header connector and ordered December 16th, arrived January 19th, $6.60. Oh. oh wow, look at that, multiple layers of bubble wrap here. Yeah. And these are some new uh, crimp connectors. Um, last time I showed some uh, DuPont crimps. These are JST style crimps. So when you look at um, remote control vehicle batteries like the lithium polymers, they have these kinds of JSTs on them. So J JST uh, A XH 2.54 millimeter pitch. So same thing as a pin header. And uh, let's tear into this so we can take a look here. Uh, this is a 300 piece kit. Why will you not open? There we go. And so it has these, um, I guess, female casing male pins, uh, which are, you know, 0.1 inch uh, pin spacing. So you can put this in breadboard or you can put this in, um, you know, Vero board, stuff like that. So here's a breadboard. Yep, that's the right pin spacing. You can put it easily in any one of your projects, which is nice. And then you have these male connectors uh, with the female uh, pins. And here are the crimps. So you actually crimp them onto the cable in the very same way as those DuPont ones from last time. You got like the double crimp where one part holds onto the to the wire makes an electrical connection and the other part hangs on to the insulation makes a mechanical connection and so yeah this was not very expensive six dollars and something to make custom cables they're also polarized if you notice they have these little uh, hookies on top they have these little don't know if you can quite tell there but little hooks there and these little guides here and they go together like so. So pretty neat. I'm uh, pretty excited to make my own custom cables for some stuff. This goes up to, what, six wires? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six wires. So you can make, um, you know, connections up to uh, a five cell in series setup, which is pretty neat. So. Yeah, I'm going to make balance leads, maybe extensions for uh, stepper motors, for uh, 3D printers, all sorts of cool stuff like that with my crimping kit. Just love crimping. And uh, stay tuned because I'm planning on making a full crimping videos. What kind of crimps should you buy? What kind of crimping pliers should you buy? The difference between them, uh, what they do, what they're used for, and stuff like that. It's not going to be a short video. It's going to be a big one and this will be part of it. So yeah. And so these five items make up today's mailbag. I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon patrons. Um, it's thanks to their support that I can buy stuff like this and make projects out of them. If you want to join them, there's a link in the description. Um, but I also want to thank everyone that is watching, commenting, and sharing these videos because the only way to get uh, bigger and better sponsors is to get the videos to grow, the channel to grow. And it's thanks to the uh, sharing efforts uh, on your behalf that the, the channel gets to grow. It is, you know, past 3 a.m. now? Yeah, 310. I don't know if you can see that extreme cold warning because it's going to get down to minus 30 by uh, 7 in the morning. So I need to get to bed. Thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know if you want any standalone reviews of this stuff down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.